the Cataclysm Now. My name is Ryan, and tonight we'll be taking a look at Napoleon at Waterloo. Rightfully heralded as a classic, Napoleon at Waterloo is an introductory war game depicting Napoleon's final battle of his reign. On June 18th, 1815, Napoleon has divided the Anglo-Prussian army, hoping to defeat each contingent in detail. Wellington and his forces, they've chosen uh, the hills outside of Mount Saint-Jean to hold against the French, hoping to hold off until the arrival of the Prussians on Napoleon's right flank. Now, only recently have I taken a proper dive into wargaming, um, but I have always heard of this game referenced in either articles, and conversations, and videos, and I know it was originally published in uh, the early 70s by SPI, um, but the latest edition was published by Decision Games in 2013, which is the copy that I have here. Now, I didn't see a lot of uh, photos or even footage of it online, so I thought I'd just make a quick video uh, showing off some of the counter art, the map, and basically how they've uh, polished um, the, this old classic. Starting with the map, it's fairly small and fairly simple. There's only five types of uh, terrain features. Uh, you've got uh, clear hexes, you've got roads, which function mostly to carry you through uh, wood hexes up here in the north. And I think there's actually one into the forest or the wooded area right before Hougamal. Uh, there's woods, which uh, is impassable. Uh, it's also blocking a line of sight for artillery fire. And then, like I said, there's uh, roads uh, in the woods. Now for the actual counters, uh, again, they're rather straightforward. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, French and British counters here. Historical designation, we have the combat factor. And then we've got the movement factor. We've got infantry, cavalry, and of course, artillery. Now they've abandoned the uh, NATO symbols and adopted these silhouettes here, which uh, I don't particularly mind. Um, it's a nice change of pace. Uh, nice colors, uh, the art's not bad. Uh, the Prussians are done in this uh, gray color here. Uh, they've got the same silhouette. Well, actually, no, it's a different silhouette uh, as their British counterparts. Uh, and then these are obviously the British here. Curiously missing from the map, and I know it's a simple game, but the lack of uh, hills or even uh, slopes uh, makes uh, for an interesting game considering that Wellington chose the ground. Um, not necessarily for its steep hills, but at least the um, gradation was high enough to famously hide his troops at a reverse slope, um, a tactic that he had used in campaigns uh, uh, on the I Iberian Peninsula. But I think I just think that's funny in a game of Waterloo that, that there aren't any hills for him to actually execute that. But here, the game also uses a rigid zones of control, meaning when uh, a unit enters the zone of control, of another, it cannot leave unless um, the other one is repulsed uh, based on combat. So in a situation like this, if this were what we would do um, at the end of a phase or at the end of a movement phase, we could do the um, combat phase. Now the, the game does allow for ranged artillery to participate and they can participate up to two hexes. So in this instance, um, this unit would have to attack here, 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 and then this uh, guard unit would have to soak off and do uh, these two. But the artillery then could contribute their three up to two hexes. So uh, this could fire uh, on this artillery and making an eight to three, which would be a two to one attack. And the five and the four would be a nine, and that can contribute to this, and that would be a three to one to attack. Actually, no, uh, because it's in a uh, building, uh, the building doubles the uh, combat, so it's actually a six. So this would be 
a one-to-one -one attack here. Victory conditions include a little bit of record keeping. The British, or I should say the Allies and the Prussians, they need to inflict a certain number of losses on the French for their morale to break and vice versa. But there's an additional uh, victory condition and that's for the French and they have to exit um, so many units from this uh, northwest corner here. So essentially they have to smash the British line here, hold off the encroaching Prussians, and then have enough units uh, escape off um, the northwest or northeast. Northwest. Gosh, can't get my cardinal directions right. Rather basic um, combat results table. Again, that's not a knock. It's just pretty standard in terms of there's only three types of results. There's eliminations, retreats, and exchanges, which I guess is a type of elimination. But you see at particular odds here, uh, one through five, or a, a one to five attack, that's the attacker's automatically gonna be eliminated and vice versa for the defender. As you would imagine, one to one, a 50% chance for defender retreat versus attacker retreat. And as we creep up uh, the odds, the odds, the odds of an exchange um, grow higher. Now at this level with this uh, type of game, there are no step reductions. Yeah. So there's no flip side to the counter, which is why they can use a combat results table like this or vice versa. I guess the combat results table would also drive the type of units that they would have um, uh, on, the, on the battlefield. Well, doing this video, I'm actually struck with the similarities between uh, the simple version of Napoleon at Waterloo to an earlier title that I had um, gotten for myself. Uh, actually, one of the first, quote, war games, unquote, that I owned uh, called Napoleon's Last Battles, which is also published by Decision Games. And one of the things that, that struck me was actually the similarity between the combat results table. Uh, it's not exactly the same, but it's it's very similar in terms of the one to one ratio being the same. It's a little more forgiving for the six to one uh, and the one to five odds. But in general, it struck me very similar in terms of geographic scale and the lack of step reduction, which is pretty interesting concerning um, this. It's possible to play Napoleon's Last Battles as a giant campaign. It comes with all four. So it's uh, Ligny, Quatre Bras, Wavre, and um, Mont St. John or Waterloo. Uh, but so it's essentially four games in one or five games in one. You can play each battle um, by itself and it has the scenarios to set that up. But then you can also play the entire campaign. And I think that's just interesting that they would use a very similar combat results table with no gradation in terms of losses, just this all or nothing uh, retreat or uh, eliminations. Uh, either through exchange or, or attacker or defender eliminated. But um, it's not really a comparison video, but I'd also, i just like to compare the maps because I think they're fairly, um, the geographic scale is fairly the same. Here's a rough comparison between the two maps. Obviously they're not exactly the scale, but I'm not surprised that they're that far off. Uh, the distance between uh, Hougamal and La Hassaint is only, there's two hexes in between them here. And here it's a little further, it's about four, but then the distance from La Hassaint to Mount St. John is only three. Uh, and in uh, on this map, it's only uh, two to three. Again, I'm not surprised uh, that the scale um, is not very different. Actually, I now have a greater appreciation. It's been a couple years since I've played Napoleon's Last Battles. But now that I'm seeing it as an extension uh, or a natural evolution from a Napoleon at Waterloo, obviously they share a lot in common DNA-wise in terms of combat results table. Uh, there's obviously a lot more units. Um, but And in the natural evolution, they add command control. They have uh, weather. Um, there's a lot of different rules. Um, that are added to it, but it, I can definitely see where 
it blossomed from um, Napoleon at Waterloo, and maybe I'll have to return to it sometime here in the future. Well, I can't say much more about Napoleon at Waterloo. There's a reason it's spoken so highly of and remains a staple of the hobby for the last 50 years, and I can definitely see it still being a staple uh, 50 years from now. Uh, it's super simple, introductory level, um, again, deceptively simple. It's got a uh, kind of chess-like component to it. Um, not very overwhelming. Again, a good introduction for uh, war, uh, for anybody interested in the war game and the hobby. Um, despite its simplicity, I'm still glad uh, that I have it in my collection. So again, I just wanted to make a quick video showing off some of the components in the map, especially for this uh, Decision Games uh, 2013 edition. Uh, thanks for watching.